Hello, everyone. Vincent Aiello of the Fighter Pilot Podcast back again to provide another behind the scenes look at a popular YouTube video. This one isn't mine, though. If you search carrier landing, you should see one called FA18F Carrier Break. It has over five and a half million views. It's by Wingnut172. And I want to use this as an opportunity to show you something about the Super Hornet and carrier landings. So, first off, we are seeing the front seat of an FA-18F Super Hornet. I know that because this is the helmet of the VFA-2 bullets and they fly the two-seat Super Hornet. In the cockpit here, what you see is the upfront control display, which is different than the regular Hornet. It's a touch screen, much like your iPad or iPhone. And then on the left DDI, you have a repeater of your heads up display. And then by the pilot's left knee, you have the integrated fuel and engine instruments indicator or the IFE. Here you have the multi-purpose color display with a top-down view of navigational information. And then over here to the right, it looks like after the flight and post-production, they've just blurred out the right DDI in case there was any radar information there. Now in the write-up for this video, it says it is a section or a two-ship of aircraft coming into the break at the carrier. So here is the carrier beginning to come into view and you'll see the pilot here look over his right shoulder to make sure his wingman is in the proper position before they come in for the break and then as he sets up for the break what would be normal is for the flight of two to at least cross over the carrier and then for the pilot to kiss off his wingman and then roll to the left and pull while retarding the throttles to idle and extending the speed brakes. And instead what you're going to see here is the pilot's going to roll left. Now watch his left hand. He's going to go to full afterburner. He's going to roll and pull as hard as he can for a few potatoes before he deselects afterburner. And my guess is what he's trying to do here is make a little extra noise for the landing signal officers in an attempt to wow them when in what we call the shit hot break, which is anytime you give them a mini air show, they're liable to give you a break, if you will, on the grade uh, for your pass. But as we'll find in a moment, this particular pilot's pass is pretty good. Now, as he's pulling a 360 degree turn, what you'll see is he will steal glances outside to see how he's doing with his distance from the ship and his overall alignment. Now, this is a decelerating descending, configuring 360 degree turn. What I mean by that is, except for the little burst of afterburner, Generally, he should be slowing his aircraft to at least 250 knots to lower his gear and flaps. Then he should be configuring the uh, trim as well as arriving in a position where he can then make the appropriate landing. So he is a little bit beyond what would be normal for a younger pilot, but he is most likely pretty proficient. And he is, as long as he's getting himself to the 90, which is about when you can start seeing the extended wake of the carrier, as long as everything's good to go then, then what you want to do is you want to line up with this wake on your left hand side because of the angle of the landing area you're not coming straight up the back of the ship you're actually coming at it a little bit from right to left all right so he is going to roll into what we call the groove here it might be just a touch long in the groove and you won't be able to see it as well on this video as the next one i'll show you but watch how much he's moving the stick it is constantly in motion he's making numerous small corrections the entire way down and the whole time what he is doing is he's flying what we call meatball lineup and angle of attack now first off you can see another aircraft is coming into the break right here but if you are a listener or viewer of our podcast you remember from episodes 15 and 16 on day and night carrier landings that the meatball is our source for glide slope our lineup, which is completely occluded by the canopy bow, which gives you an idea of just how small it is. And then the angle of attack is simply the angle of your aircraft compared to the relative wind. And it just makes sure that you are in the appropriate, I should say you are at the appropriate speed to land so that your gear will land correctly and the hook is in the appropriate spot. So as you get close to crossing the ramp, all you're looking at is meatball, lineup, and angle of attack. What you're not looking at are these guys. These are your landing signal officers. And I can tell you that they're certainly looking at you, but there's no reason for you to look at them anymore. So now you can start to see the landing area here a little bit. The ball appears maybe just a little bit high, but it's tough to see. The camera could be higher than the pilot's eyes. But you typically want that right in the middle 
of these green datums and that provides you the correct location on the glide slope. Now here is a wire. It looks like maybe the, let's see here. So this is probably the one wire, the two wire, the three wire, and the four wire. Again, when you're flying, you're not looking at that. You're simply looking at the meatball, the lineup, and the angle of attack. And based on where the pilot lands, you can see that it's pretty violent. He gets thrown forward, but from having done this a few times, I would say that was probably a three wire. And in a moment, as he gets pulled back, you'll see a yellow shirt or a taxi director appear, here he is, just behind the pilot's helmet. And he is now who the pilot is looking for, for all his instructions. So the first thing you'll see is the yellow shirt will give him, that is a thumbs up from his right hand into the bottom of his left. And the pilot here will raise his hook. And then he will begin to taxi him to clear the landing area to the right. Now what you're seeing here, this is the catapult track for catapult three, and here is catapult four. So we land where we take off, but of course not at the same time. They will generally shut those down before you land and put them to bed. But in the case of carrier qualifications, they might be able to run the bow catapults one and two. Now this is most likely a carrier on deployment. You can see many other F-18s. You've got the E-2 Hawkeye here that's turning and some other F-18s over there. Over here on the right, you've got more F-18s and what we call the six pack. And then the island structure itself, you can see the uh, turning radar dish. Now with a little proficiency, what many pilots will do as they clear the landing area is they'll look over their right shoulder and see just which wire they grabbed. That gives you an idea of how you did instantly. Of course, the landing signal officers will come down and debrief you later, but it gives you an idea. If you see the three wire and you felt like it went pretty well, well, there's a good chance that you will get an okay. All right, you remember on one of our earlier episodes, we talked about the different flight deck jersey colors. You can see here, we've got quite a smattering. We've got the red, that will be for ordnance. And then the red in the background, they're covered with their safety suits. Those are the crash and salvage guys as well. And then you've got, so the khaki pants means either a chief or an officer. And this is probably one of your squadron personnel. He's wearing green. Remember, green for the squadron means maintenance, but green for the other fellas probably means catapults and arresting gear. You have your yellow shirts, again, for plane directors. You have your brown shirts. Those are your plane captains. You have your white for safety. And then difficult to see, but over here, you've got some guys in purple. Those are your fuel personnel as well. Now what the plane captain or the plane director will do is he will bring the pilot to a stop and then he will tell this other guy, hey, get out of the way. And then he will. And then he's going to hand you off to the red shirt. And so this particular aircraft must have been carrying some sort of ordnance, maybe a real AIM-9, maybe a CATAM or captive carried AIM-9 for training. Either way, they treat it the same and they will de-arm that uh, here with the red shirts. And the pilots will stick their hands up in the air simply to show that they are not actuating any cockpit switches at that time. Now, I want to distinguish or compare, if you will, this particular landing with this other video called FA-18 Carrier Landing in Bad Weather and Low Visibility. This has slightly fewer views, as you can see, 13,000, almost 500. And you can tell that this day, as the title suggests, is not particularly great weather. It's low clouds. The sea is pretty churned up, so there's probably a lot of natural wind. You can also tell that there's very little, if any, wake coming from the carrier. So it's just barely making steerage. All the wind is natural. And that will play out here in a moment with the burble, which we've talked about before. Now I want you to watch the pilot's left hand compared to his right hand. Again, you will see that it is a full contact sport. If you notice just there, he reached his thumb down and I presume he deselected his auto throttles. Maybe he was following it, but he says, you know what? I don't like the auto throttles with this much wind. I'm going to do it myself. So he will, and it is again, very active, uh, adding power, subtracting power, trying to stay on the glide slope the best that he can. And then he'll get to a point here where if you recall, there is what we call a burble coming off the carrier. And what that is, is it's the wind that comes off the flight deck, goes down and hits the sea, and then bounces off and comes up. And what it does is it creates a lot of lift when you don't want it, and then a giant suck hole when you don't want it. And so watch what happens here. He's going to keep flying, and then he's going to come all the way back right here. He's at idle power. He's going to do that twice. He's going to leave it there for a few seconds. Watch it in real time. 
Here's idle power, a couple seconds. He comes up, back to idle. And what will happen is now he gets into that suck hole. And so the ball's just a little bit high, but I can almost guarantee you that the landing signal officers are screaming power at him because he will go to full power and he'll stay there. It's not enough. The ball's in the middle, but watch what happens. By the time he touches down, it's dropping off the bottom. And based on where he lands, remember where the yellow shirt was before? Well, now he's way up here. And so that is most likely a one wire. It sucks. I've been there and it just comes with the territory. So he will make his way up the little taxi of shame, as we call it, to get to the normal spot where you would turn out of the landing area. And you can see this might be carrier qualifications or something else. Not a lot of aircraft on the flight deck, just this one other F-18. And then they will find a place either for him to park or they might actually send him back over to the catapult to go again. Sometimes your squadron personnel are already asking you, hey, are you up? Are you down? Tell us how you're doing. In the case of a one wire, you're just kind of frantically thinking, what just happened? Where am I? What? Oh, wait, what do you want? Uh, yeah, sure, I'm fine. But most of the time, it's just all you can do to say, crap, what just happened? And when it's a one wire, it kind of sucks. Anyway. That is a look at some day carrier landings. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please feel free to share this video with others. Leave a comment if you like and subscribe to the Fighter Pilot Podcast YouTube page. And when we make more of these in the future, they should come to you automatically. Well, don't forget to join us at fighterpilotpodcast.com. You can find the actual podcast audio version everywhere podcasts are available. And we are also on all the usual social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and even Patreon. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on the Fighter Pilot Podcast. See ya.